Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody is enjoying their lives, right? That's the most important thing. We are less than what? A couple of weeks away from Thanksgiving, the kickoff officially uh, to the end of 2023. You got Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday. Then you got Christmas. New Year's and everything else uh, is set for first quarter of 2024. Only thing we ask, guys, if you are uh, getting value, creating value, all that good stuff, uh, coming aboard uh, as a subscriber, uh, just like, share, subscribe. Oh, that's it. That's all we all ask. Uh, just have an open mind of uh, technical analysis, bias, and unbiased opinion. Uh, and then you start looking at the market in a little bit better and a little bit cleaner view. So thank you very much for spending a few moments with us. So after last week, uh, we had this magnificent, magnificent rally. Hell, we just had this magnificent rally now uh, for the last couple of weeks. So we reclaimed the 50-day moving average. You can see here, just a great, great move. Uh, and then Friday uh, came out with a Moody's uh, downgrade uh, for the United States for the outlook, blah, blah, blah. And right, right away, I'm getting emails, I'm getting texts. Oh my God, the United States got... Uh, downgraded. What, you know what's going on? And I, like I said on the video on on the weekend, you know the, the queues were down thirty cents after the close, right? Uh, you know, so going into today's session, uh, I didn't really didn't think there was gonna be any panic just because of the reaction uh, of the queues on Friday and turn, today turned into being an inside day. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the Dow uh, eked out a profit uh, up fifty points or so. Nasdaq and S and P, S and P was down. You know three points. NASDAQ was down 30 points. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, a lot of stocks basically rested. Uh, it was an inside day. You can see it's an inside day today, which is very, very bullish. Again, the key to the bulls, uh, they have to hold on to the five day. As you can see here, just on this grind here, uh, every single time we hit the five day, we bounced, hit the five day, we bounced, hit the five day, we bounced. And here we are uh, above the five day. Um, you know, nothing, some, some days you, you, you know, you look at the update and you say, well, there's very, very specific things we have to watch for, look for, you know, look, is there a CPI number tomorrow? Yes. Uh, you know, they're going to talk about inflation. They talk about inflation every single day. Uh, there, there's nothing more or less important about tomorrow's, uh, CPI report at 830 than it is on any random Fed chairman speaking in the middle of the day, uh, Powell deciding to hold, you know, hold fort. Uh, you know, hold court, hold Ford, hold court uh, any any time throughout the week. It, look, it's just it's a data driven market. It's an inflation data driven market. It's just something we have to live with. So nobody should be getting ready for the CPI tomorrow. Uh, is this finally going to be a scenario that the CPI, you know, that the market just needs any excuse uh, to come in a little bit? Yeah, very possible. Right. Absolutely. Very possible. And if that's the case, obviously, uh, like we've been talking about in, in video after video after video. Again, don't pick a you know an area that you want to guess that there's a back test. Just take the previous day's range. No matter what stock you're trading, no matter what ETF you're trading, whatever the case may be, you don't need to guess. Just you know, know identify what the previous day's channel low is, and once it confirms it, that is your signal to get short. Other than that, what are you doing guessing? Right? We've been kind of talking about that uh, for a number of weeks. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the market continues to drift. Um, you know, we'll see what the CPI report is uh, tomorrow. I'm not sure how much data change has changed from last Friday to last Thursday to last Wednesday to last Tuesday to last, you know, the last, you know, Groundhog's Day, right? It feels like there's a data report here coming out every single second of the day. So again, we'll see what happens, right? Uh, we'll see what happens. Always be prepared for both sides of the market. The cues, you can clearly see here the cues. Uh, 374 is is going to be uh, the rising support for the five day. Uh, if the number comes in, um, you know, if the number comes in hot or if the number comes in cold, whatever the hell the number comes in tomorrow, I uh, use that 374 as your guideline, right? 374 is uh, the five day support. It is the shortest term sentiment. And if the market continues to hold, you know, that's a good sign. It's a very good sign. Uh, and if the market starts squeezing back over Friday's channel, the 378, like I said, on um like i said on the weekend video you know we should see a push you know we should see a push of that 380 
381 level, maybe even the 382 level. But you know, again, I, I don't. I, I think too many people on social media are, are putting this CPI number uh, on on a platform tomorrow. You know, on, on on a pedestal that oh my god, you have to get ready for. What do you have to get ready for? Every single day, normal business, right? It's, you know, stop with the FOMO. You have to get ready for this. You have to get ready for that. It's a normal trading day, right? Every single day, there's something going on. There's a Fed coming out. There's some sort of data coming out. Look, if you want to be a professional, act like a professional. If you want to sit there and create FOMO and create FOMO with everybody else, that's up to you. But every professional trader knows exactly what's going, what's happening tomorrow. Uh, we, we understand the ramifications of a good number, of a bad number. And now we have to just figure out which way is the first 13 moves, right, going to gonna happen tomorrow, right? Is it one of those scenarios that we start taking out the previous day's channel one way or another? Yeah, and if that's the case, good, you know, that's good for us. It's exactly what we need. If the market continues to be uh, going sideways in um, a very lackluster uh, type of manner, that it's, it's actually good too. That means the sellers are very comfortable uh, with the current market structure. But again, be, you know, be open on both sides of the market, right? That's the name of the game. Be open on both sides of the market. No, you know, you know, no professional traders freaking out tonight. Get ready for tomorrow's CPI. It's an amateur thing to say. You know, it's an amateur thing to say. And I see people with all this FOMO tomorrow, tomorrow's CPI. It's going to be epic. What's going to be epic about it? What was this, the first data you've ever traded? It's nothing. It's the same thing as every other data point. It's the course of doing business. Again, take a deep breath, relax, get a game plan on both sides of the market. And as long as you understand the most basic principle in trading, right? No stock goes higher unless it confirms the previous day's channel. And no stock goes lower without confirming the previous day's channel. You're okay. Everything else is FOMO. Everything else, your 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 heart is, is, is racing, you know, and these are all unhealthy traits. Uh, of a trader who is begging to go on tilt. Every professional trader is calm, they're collected, they have a game plan, they're waiting for that game plan to collect, whether it's CPI, PPI, ABC, or ESPN. doesn't make a difference. Be ready, stay calm, and stay collected. Other than that, you know, business today, as usual, uh, some decent pivots today. Stocks uh, continue just not caring about anything, you know, including the Moody's downgrade, right? Yet NVIDIA just keeps on rolling, right? Again, they're rolling in those 500, 505 calls, uh, that is literally the last, at least, company that I'm interested in. in earnings, they report uh, in eight days, right? Re they re report uh, November the 21st. They continue to go higher. They continue to buy dips. Today, we had a great dip. Remember, we were talking about on the video uh, on the video uh, over the weekend and kind of every video. You know, I don't want to chase these things into strength, but into dips, these things are great. They, you know, they, they come into the 60-minute support, right? They come into the 60-minute support like NVIDIA did today. They trapped and exploded. Uh, you know, even even uh, look, look at names like Amazon, right? Resting today, right? Look at AMD, resting today. These are inside days. These are good, right? Look at Microsoft, right? Resting again. Inside days. These are good. Meta today finally broke out, right? Meta today finally broke out. Uh, you know, gave, you know, gave us a pretty decent move, a couple of bucks into into supply. Not a huge yet, but again, we knew it was only going to be a couple of bucks into supply just because there's there's a supply zone there. Uh, Tesla today. Got a little bit stronger, right? And let's talk about Tesla for a second. So we've been doing really, really well identifying pivots, especially to the downside on P Tesla ever since it broke the 50-day moving average and obviously blew up on earnings. Uh, we had this incredible run uh, to the downside uh, for the last couple of weeks. We had this great pivot off the 15, uh, came in overnight, blah, 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 all that stuff here. This morning, uh, I woke up and you see uh, Tesla, you know, it's, you know, gapping up a couple of bucks. Uh, news came out of India, I believe. That there's some sort of EV tax and credit and all that stuff on Tesla. I was like, yeah, I get it, you know, but how many people are rocking Teslas in, in India, right? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. And from what I understand, they haven't even sold anything in, in, in India. But again, I could be wrong. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, a, a Twitter, uh, you know, Twitter cult follower of Tesla. I just trade the price action. However, what we did see, right, more important what the news was, what kind of the reaction to it? So we started seeing a lot of aggressive call buying coming in, especially on the weeklies. We started seeing uh, 225s, 230s, 235s. We started seeing really heavy bet uh, bets coming in for the December 250s. Again, it's one of those scenarios. Do they know something? Is this one of those scenarios that people are just guessing? Is it one of those scenarios that people are anticipating that Tesla is going to eventually join uh, this price action party? Or are people just literally... YOLOing, right? Tesla has to go up. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But the price action today was really, really good. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Here's kind of where Tesla gets interesting. As you can see, you see this dark blue line? And I had to make the line uh, darker today. Thank you very much for Arvin showing me how to do it. I, 
I've been only using uh, eSignal. I, guys, check this out. I've been using eSignal since 2001, right? This is the oldest version of eSignal. So I started trading in 99. This account was created in May of 2001. So you can see, you can see I've been trading kind of a long time, kind of too long for, for God's sake. Uh, last time I updated this thing was 2016. So I had to figure out how to make these lines a little bit darker. Thank you very much for Arvin. So you see this last line here, right? This big blue line here keeps on getting rejected there. Here, that's the key for Tesla, right? That's the key. In the next couple of days, again, doesn't necessarily have to be today or tomorrow or the next day, but keep an eye on the top of the channel here on Tesla, right? If we start seeing really, really aggressive call buying coming in and we have another inside day or there's a, you know, there's a reaction to the CPI, but Tesla is not going down. These are all signs we want to see that, hey, maybe this thing could actually join the party. Again, 230s, uh, 230 weeklies are coming in pretty aggressively. We saw some December 250s. Those are very, very important as well. But the key here is to get above this channel here. As you can see here, it's gotten rejected off the channel once, twice, three times, and today almost made it there, but not quite. So we want to watch the top of the channel because if they could get above the channel, it's not going to have a straight beeline $10, $15 point, but at least the point of reference, and again, the most basic theory about you know the PS60 theory and the technical analysis, stocks could only go higher if they take out supply, and stocks could only go lower if they well, take out demand. So you can see here, it's gotten rejected off supply three separate times. If Tesla starts to build over supply, maybe if you finally start getting into the mid-30s, it's something I definitely want to watch uh, for the next uh, couple of days. Look at names like Shop, for example, going sideways after earnings. Uh, AMD is another name, resting. Uh, Amazon, you know, just resting. So we want to watch the you know the, the same names over and over and over again. And I tweeted I tweeted out early. I, I think I'm at the point of my career, and I'm going on year 25. But I think I'm at the point of my career that I'm kind of good with trading the same 10 stocks. I, I think that's it, man. You know, the same 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 10 stocks over and over again. Amazon, Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Nvidia. Uh, you know, you know, then, you know. Listen, from once in a while, I, I trade like a like a Shopify, AMD. I like as well. Uh, but if, again, it, it's it's almost at the point that it's like my children. You know, it's like when you when you come home, you look at your kid's face. You know, if you had a good day or a bad day. These stocks are kind of like my kids at some point. Like I, I kind of know what to make of them. You know how they're feeling, how what they should be doing how they should be responding to certain angles. So it's one of those scenarios that I feel very comfortable. And going forward, I'm probably going to be trading 99% of the same stocks it's just because it's just the greatest value. And if you are on the webinar, you kind of attest to this, man. It's just like when these things get going, it doesn't mean going up, going down as well. It, it really, really makes uh, things very seamless when uh, price action is confirmed, especially with aggressive uh, out of the money uh, option flow. And that's a very, very important point. So going into tomorrow, again, we'll see what the CPI uh, holds, right? We'll see what happens there. We'll see what the reaction time is. We'll see exactly uh, what stock is moving to the upside, what stock is moving to the downside, and we'll get a good understanding, especially by the 10 o'clock channel. So again, technically, no news is good news. Uh, the market continues to act uh, pretty well. So these are the pivots of the day, right? These are the pivots of the day. Uh, Amazon never confirmed. Starbucks never confirmed. Uh, DDOG not a big move, but DDOG we talked about this on uh, the weekend video. 104, 104 uh, 50 earnings high needs to build. Here was DDOG, not a huge move, but uh, 104 50 traded up to almost 106. Again, nice looking chart. Uh, all it needs to do is get above like 106 and a half, 107. I think you can start in the next leg up. Uh, Lenar, I didn't see Lenar. What did Lenar do today? Lennar did nothing. And it, it actually stopped exactly where it was supposed to. I still like this Lennar. It's going sideways. Uh, Meta today was pretty damn good. Uh, 329, 10, and 30, 30, 50 needs to build. Uh, Meta started taking out Friday's highs, took out the highs from 10, 12. And again, start, it stopped uh, right in the 332s just because there was a Bollinger Band there. But again, this thing starts getting above back above 333. Uh, Meta is going to wake up again. Uh, CVNA, it went down like 20 cents, nothing. Uh, car, crowd, uh, crowd, if it opens below 197, then use that for second entry and then needed to confirm 199.50. Here was a uh, crowd. I didn't trade this crowd a little too, too, uh, too thin for me, but nice move on crowd. Went all this to 202. Uh, this thing looks, uh, higher. Uh, Meta, and not Meta, and Tesla, right? That's what we talk about Tesla. T Tesla, 218.50 needs to build. Yeah, Tesla build. Uh, Tesla definitely built. Uh, here was Tesla 
So it took out this whole channel here, pregnant pause, and just absolutely exploded uh, into the 25s. And like I said, all it needs to do is get above this channel here. Everything else pretty much rested. Everything else pretty much had an inside day. Again, guys, remember, social media is good because you get to meet cool people. You get to exchange ideas. But you got to you gotta really... You got to really curb who you're following on Twitter. I mean, I see so many people just FOMOing newer traders into this. You know, trade the Fed, trade the CPI. Oh, my God. Guys, you want to run away from, you know, from the tornado. You don't want to want to run in it. Guys, every single trading day, be prepared on both sides. Every day before the open, take a breath, relax, right? Relax. There's no event that's going to make you or break you. Have a calm, cool, collected uh, mindset going into the trading day. Know exactly what you want to do. Don't deviate from your process. Don't prostitute your money and just act like a professional. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. Have a great trading day. And God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.